This is a tutorial I've been trying to get around to doing for ages, so I'm going to show you how I made it. The first thing I did is I took a cast of my hand, and this is pretty simple. You just want to make a little cardboard box that's going to fit your hand in it, then you get to get some alginate, you're going to pour some alginate into the box, and then you're going to pop your hand in. Now this part is going to be messy, and to be honest I messed it up twice, so don't worry if you mess up, but once it's dried and you've peeled away the alginate, you should be left with a hand. Now the reason mine is discoloured is because I took so long to paint it, and this is the colour that the latex is going to go after a while, and it's also going to shrink. My hand is not that small. My hands are small, but they are not that small, and my fingers are a little longer. To be honest, the alginate didn't get all the way to the end. But on one of the fingers, I pulled that finger free, cut a hole in it, and then made a little paper clay bone which I've popped inside. Now for painting it, what I'm going to be using is an alcohol activated makeup. So I'm going to add some alcohol into that, and I'm going to be using one of those little pipettes to add the alcohol. And then I'm going to take some art brushes, try and use something which is synthetic. Anything which has natural fibre is going to get completely destroyed if you use alcohol. So try and use synthetic hair brushes. First thing I'm going to do is all those little air bubbles onto the hand. Well, I'm going to start turning those into rot holes or maggot holes. So, you know, charming stuff. I'm going to fill them in and then around some of the holes I'm going to dabble a little texture with my fingers. Now around the bone I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to be doing two different layers. First I'm going to do more of a pinky layer and then later on I'm going to do a red layer. And then here where I've got this massive air bubble I'm going to fill that up with red and then also bring it up along the finger where the air bubble pretty much took over most of my finger and just make it look as if that part of the finger got completely torn away. Now on the bottom of the hand I'm going to paint this all red. As it turns out later on I changed my mind with what I wanted to do with the hand and there really wasn't much point to this. But in general try and paint even the areas that you think aren't going to be seen because you never know and it's just good practice. It doesn't matter if other people don't see it, it's just a good standard to try and aim for. I'm also going to redden the knuckles and add a little bit more red and yes in general this is going to have a lot of red but it's a zombie. That's why we like it, there's a lot of red. So I'm going to keep painting that and then add more dark red around the bone. Later on we're going to be colouring in the bone and make it look a little bit dark. For the moment it's just too white. A bone, especially a fresh bone, isn't going to look like that. It's going to have more of a yellowy tinge. But now going back to the nails, I'm going to add some red over that. And there are two different things that you can do here. You could either put the red underneath and then pop the fake nail on top of it like what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick out the nails that I want. Or what you could do is not even bother with that red undertone just because later on I decided to go with something much heavier and it basically made what I did earlier pointless. But these are two different things you can do. One other thing that I'm going to suggest is that you need to make the nails look very worn. There's no point having a hand which looks very, very battered and then having nails which are in perfect condition. It's just not very realistic. So I'm going to take a nail file and I'm going to completely destroy the end of the nails. And I'm especially going to try and get that nail file and put it up so that that way it looks like the nails have dragged down on something and then the nails have been scraped up. And yes, I know that sounds disgusting. It's making my skin crawl just saying it, but this is a zombie. I want something which is going to make my skin crawl. Then I'm going to take some glue, stick those nails down, and as you can see some of that red is showing up. And then I'm going to be using a glass cloche. First thing I need to do, because this is going to have to stick down, is we want to figure out where we want that hand to be. You could maybe have it a little bit lopsided. Me, I want it smack bang in the centre. And then I'm going to make a little hole at the base of the hand and use a glue gun. No surprises there. Before I go ahead and put the hand on the stand, I'm going to take out the bottom of the hand and create a cavity there so that I can fill it up with a glue gun. This is much easier to do if you haven't left the latex hand on the side to dry for too long, but obviously it can still be done. Fill that in with the glue and then you're going to stick it down on the stand. Now if you get a few little pieces of glue sticking out the side, it's fine. Just take a sculpting tool or a craft knife and just scrape that against the hand. But then to make this stick down even more, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole at the base. Now I'm going to be using a craft knife just because I'm a little bit of a brute, but it's probably better if you use a drill. I'm going to take a screw that I know is going to be long enough to go through the stand and then into the hand as well, and then I'm going to screw that in. Now you don't have to do this, I want to make sure that this thing is going to be solid and it can be rattled around and it's not going to fall anywhere. So if you want something which is going to be a little bit hard wearing, do try and screw it down. Otherwise you could just leave it with a glue gun base. Now the nails I'm going to make look even more destroyed. I'm going to take a craft knife and cut a few thin lines so that I can peel those nails back. 
Now for the blood I'm going to be doing something a little odd but what I'm going to be using is a wax and this is the kind of wax that you use to make seals on letters. I'm going to add this around the bone and have this drip down and the reason I wanted to do this is because I honestly wanted something which is a little bit theatrical and exaggerated and I could have used something like well, special effects blood, but I didn't want something which could end up on the side of the glass and leave stains. The wax, it doesn't matter if it hits the glass or if it touches something, it's not going to leave a stain. And even if you get some of it on the stand, you can easily take it off with a craft knife. So that's why I decided to do that. But to keep that shininess, I went over it with a nail varnish. Now, obviously, if you don't have a wax like this or you'd rather use fake blood, go ahead and do that. I'm going to cover the base with some fake blood, uh, sorry not some fake blood, some nail varnish and then I'm going to add some red nail varnish around some of the nails and then over that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the alcohol palette and add some black and some brown and dab all that with my fingers and a brush to make them look really disgusting and destroyed before going over the hand again and making sure that I've covered all those different air pockets with red. I like to think that Thumbelina used to take good care of her nails pre-zombie phase, so I'm going to paint them. After that I'm going to take some food colouring, put it in a dish, add a little bit of water and then use that to stain the bone so that you get this slightly pinkish tinge and it's not going to look so bright. Even though I am going for a theatrical look, I don't want it to look quite that theatrical. Then I'm going to add some pure food colouring right in the centre of the bone to make it look even more well, raw and marrowy before I go over the nail varnish and scuff it up completely with a nail file. Don't be afraid to really go for it with a nail file, and especially down the centre of the nail where it's more likely to be worn and damaged. But then, that's pretty much it. You just want to add the glass bell and that's it. You're done. I've got you deep in the heart of me So deep in my heart that 